Hello everybody, it's Tanner Fishies here, back again with a new Ninjago video here on the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Ninjago Core set number 71767, the Ninja Dojo Temple. This set comes with 1,394 pieces and retails for roughly $100 in the United States. This is the big one of Ninjago Core. This is the largest set that you can find, and I want to give my thoughts on it in this video. This video is not trying to be a professional LEGO review. I do not review LEGO sets as my main source of content on this channel. So, so this review will be kind of rough around the edges, probably not the most professional thing out there, but I'm trying my best here. I do want to gush about this set for a little bit because it is worth talking about and worth considering getting because I feel like as Ninjago temples go, this thing is actually quite nice. So I'm going to showcase my personal thoughts about this set in today's video. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump on into it. Let's take a look at this set in more detail. Why don't we start off first by taking a look at the minifigures that you get in this set and then we will just continue on to the builds from there. All right, so switching things over and taking a look at the minifigures. These are all of the good guys that you get in this set, and this is a pretty good selection, I must say. You get some pretty cool figures here. You get the ninja, including Kai, Lloyd, Nia, and Cole. Not all six of the ninja, but a good amount, over half of them, of course. I've talked about each of these ninja in a separate video, so feel free to check out that video if you want to see a little bit more of my thoughts on these uh, specific versions of the ninja. They're okay. They're not terrible. I like how each one contains a sword. Kai does include a red sword somewhere, but for some reason I have him displayed with a gold one, so whatever. Cole has this really cool hammer thing, just brick built, built up like that. You can kind of see how that works. Overall, a pretty solid ninja cast, not gonna lie. Like I said, over half of the characters, and I think this is a good combination. You get Kai, Lloyd, Nia, and Cole. Once again, not doing too bad there. Uh, for other good guys, you get the new versions of Master Wu and Pixel, respectively. Let's take a look at those guys separately. So these figures are actually pretty cool for this set. You get a new version of Master Wu and a new version of Pixel Samurai. X. Master Wu's new kimono is pretty nice. Taking away his staff really quick will allow us to get a better look at at his hat flying away at the print itself. So just rehatting Master Wu really quick, you can see that this kimono is really nice. Brown, uh, tan, and white. Really cool, really reflective with the golden print as well. I absolutely love this new kimono for Master Wu. It's a pretty cool design, I suppose. It's actually not too bad. I do kind of prefer some other variations of Wu's uh, kimono, but this one is actually not too bad. The new pixel, though, is fantastic. She includes a wrench as her accessory and, uh, you know, just taking that away from her really quick, hoping hoping nothing flies off of her do away with that. This figure is amazing. First of all, that hairpiece is just Nia's, but recolored, which of course is pretty obvious, but uh, it's not too bad. It looks pretty cool. I kind of wish it was a little bit more shiny, a little bit more silver. This one is a more, I guess, in, done up in a more of a gray color, but it still is pretty reflective in and of itself. It's just not as silver as I would have liked it to be, I suppose. Mine looks a little dull. Uh, the Samurai X costume is pretty sweet. You can see her symbol right there looking awesome. You can see her shoulder pads looking cool. I don't know how I feel about the red hand Hands, though. The red hands kind of throw me off a little bit, but overall, uh, very solid updates to Master Wu and Pixel especially. This is very nice to get a new version of Pixel after, uh, after how many years of not having a new one. It's nice to see a new Pixel non-Samurai X, but Pixel. Uh, you can see that uh, Pixel does also have an alternate face. If we just flip things over to the back side, she has a little bit more of a happy face. I prefer the angry expression personally. I think that's more uh, suitable for Pixel, I guess you could say. Master Wu also has some back printing, but his back printing is just a bunch of symbols. What does that say? Feel free to let me know down below in the comments. For bad guys, you get a couple of snakes, a couple of these orange snakes. I've talked about these in other videos before, but this is the first time that I'm actually talking about the minifigures in hand, and they're okay, they're all right. We get one black snake and one orange snake for the for the head uh, colors, I suppose. They're just kind of molded in opposite reverse colors, depending on which one you are looking at. Uh, do these guys have official names? Let me check really quick. Uh, yeah, we actually have Boa Destructor on the left and Cobra Mechanic, I think is what that says on the right here. Uh, okay, they're all right. Not supposed to be any type of specific serpentine members. I do like the colors, the orange, the gray, the little bit of blue. It looks nice, but I still prefer the Hydro uh, Vipers or the Moray Guards, whatever they were called during the Seabound wave. I like those a little bit more. And you can see the back of what these guys look like. Uh, accessories, one of them has two gauntlets and one of them has this weird uh, four-armed appendage thing that just gives him 
two extra arms here. So I suppose he has four arms in total, but he has two extra ones right here. Could do with another set of arms if he really wanted to. I don't know. These guys are just okay to me. You also do get a couple of hair pieces in this set, specifically Nia's and Kai's. Always nice to get another one of those Nia hair pieces. I love that piece a lot. And this little um, helmet slash wig station can be easily put pretty much anywhere in the temple itself. I couldn't really find a spot for it, so I just kind of have it. But you can put masks on there too if you so desire. So as mentioned, you do not just get the temple to build in this set. You also get these two things, which are basically a Kai mech and a snake driller. We're going to take the snake driller away for right now and take a look at that here in a minute. I want to first take a look at this new Kai mech. What is this thing all about? So obviously this mech utilizes uh, various new parts that were introduced for this year, especially these elbow joints and knee joints. Well, not necessarily joints, but pieces to make it look like there's a bend there. Well, in reality, there's not. And Kai's mech uses a handful of them, obviously all in orange. You can get some pretty spectacular poses out of, the, uh, out of this thing as a result of those pieces being used here. You also get some new armor pieces used on the legs. That's nice. And as mentioned, this thing is very poseable due to the several ball joints that you get on this thing. You get ball joints in both of the shoulders. You get ball joints in the ankles, obviously. You can pose the feet around any which way that you'd like. And that makes for some pretty cool looking poses. Like that doesn't look too bad, actually. Just making a quick pose here. Strike a pose for the camera. Uh, yeah, pretty cool, all things considered. I love the colors. Red, orange, gold, and black are the primary colors used here. So that's cool. Uh, other articulation, you have these weird finger things, I suppose, on both hands. You also get this shoulder cannon, which does uh, which does usually contain a stud. Mine doesn't for some reason. Uh, not that I don't have those uh, for this set. They did include them. I just choose not to display it. I do like how the cannon looks though. It looks pretty cool. It looks pretty violent all things considered. Looks like a cannon with a turret on it. Can't really complain too much about that. He's also holding a sword in this hand. And of course you do get one of these weird um, collectible flags for this wave on this mech. And as you can see, that print does kind of display the temple in full, and that just attaches to the back of Kai's mech like so. There's also some other points back here where you can probably attach things like weaponry if you'd like. I don't know, this is not a bad mech for... Kai, this is actually pretty sweet. Now, this does remind me a lot of Zane's power-up mech, which is obvious. It's very similar in terms of the way that it's built and the size, which I think is good. It's nice to include something like this as a side build. I do not mind this at all. You can flip this piece open to reveal Kai himself in there. There he is, and you can obviously just close him up and send him into battle. This is a pretty cool mech, all things considered. The bad guys get this little tank thing. Is it a tank? It looks more like a ramming thing to me, and we'll see more of that later on. Uh, it rolls, okay. It rolls as you'd expect. It has no tires, but it still rolls. I do like these small little back wheels. Those are quite adorable. You can also spin it like that if you so desire. Um, it's not a bad, it's not a bad vehicle. It's just kind of weird looking from the front it looks okay. Uh, you can flip this thing up to reveal nothing. Fantastic. Might just want to keep that closed. I do like the wheels. Very spiky, very intimidating, I guess. However, I just can't help but find this thing adorable. I mean, look at the way that the snake sits in there with his big gauntlets around the little steering wheel. That's just adorable. Taking away the snake, you can get a better look at that little steering wheel. It's so precious. What the heck? Uh, this uh, tank thing... It's all right. I could have done without it. Maybe it would have made the set a little cheaper, but it's not a bad inclusion. It's nice to have something for the bad guys. Okay, guys. So honestly, trying to get the entire temple in frame on my desk is kind of difficult. Again, I'm not a professional Lego reviewer. I don't really prepare for this kind of stuff, but you can see just how big the entire temple is right here. It is also quite wide, taking up a large amount of space and uh, just kind of uh, taking you guys off the tripod quick so I can move you guys around a little bit. Uh, let's Let's go ahead and see what there is to see. Again, not a professional, but as you can see right here, this little uh, bridge is actually quite nice. I do like how that is constructed uh, using various gold and red pieces. It looks pretty good. You can have a figure walk across that and go on to this little uh, area over here, which I think is a nice addition. You can see what's just kind of going on there. Just kind of little, a uh, couple of unlit torches. Seems to be like a hangout spot, maybe. It's like a fire pit for the ninja to just hang out at. Uh, you get a nice tree there. That's pretty cool. And I once again, I do really like the 
bridge that connects over here. But it is going to be very easy to talk about this temple without talking about this portion, which is why I'm just kind of reviewing this first. Yeah, to me, it's okay. Just a nice little uh, hangout spot for the ninja, it seems. Nothing too crazy about that. I just really like that bridge. But uh, yeah, the entire uh, temple connected as it is, it is kind of, uh, kind of massive. It does kind of take up a lot of space, depending on where you have it. If it's on your shelf or if it's on your desk like it is now for me, it's going to take up a fair amount of space. And while it still may not be entirely in frame, I think this is a pretty good view of the overall temple itself. It looks pretty cool. I really like the construction on this thing. The shapes, the colors are just gorgeous. To me, this does look pretty similar to the Temple of Fortitude that came out a while ago for Ninjago, but I think this guy does the job a lot better. And if you don't have that original set, this is very much a good stand-in for that Temple of Fortitude. The back is obviously very open. It provides that dollhouse feel, so you can still move things around inside. You could put figures in there if you so desire. You can make a display, and while it's not the most pretty from the back, it is worth it for the target audience of this set, which of course is younger kids. It's easy for them to go through and play with this thing, uh, check out all the, all the different sites and all the different rooms and whatnot, and I think we should look at those two uh, individually, starting with how the temple looks from the front. Let's just do this layer by layer. So the bottom layer of this temple, the bottom floor, if you will, is basically just all stone. As you can see, stone all the way around. You have these nice steps sort of leading up to the main temple doors. You have this flag right here, which is a nice printed part. And you have this little tree up front, which can be uh, rotated like that. You can move that around depending on what you like. I don't think there's anything specific going on in the stairs. I can't remember if there's like some type of hidden feature or something. I don't think so. Unlike the original Temple of Fortitude set, there is no like trap that's going to kill you when you try to walk through the door or anything like that. Uh, you also have this bit of wall right here, which is kind of hollowed out, and that is for a reason. You are supposed to take uh, this snake driller thing and kind of just drill your way through the wall, and we can look at that from the other side when we get to the back side of this thing. Over on this side of the temple, if I could direct your attention over here, you have this nice porch area. You can actually put a figure, I'm going to put woo there, you can put a figure there. And he looks good. He looks good sitting there. It's just a nice little perch, little hangout spot. There's also this entryway into the main inside, main underground basement, if you will, of the entire temple. And I do like how this is set up with these little lanterns, this nice sticker right there. Overall, the roof, uh, of the, the structure of the roof and the overall structure of the entire temple is gorgeous looking. You can kind of see how it looks here too with these little lanterns. And there's just a lot of things that you can adjust. It just looks gorgeous, very serene, very original. It just looks awesome. There's not really much else I can say about the design work. It's just breathtakingly gorgeous. One of Ninjago's best temples and most beautiful temples, in my opinion. Panning up a little more will give us a better look at the door, which can be opened pretty easily. You just got to pull on one of these little shurikens and hope it opens for you. And you can see with the doors open, you can see right through the thing. And that's okay. That's all right, I guess. You get this nice little dragon sticker up here. Or it's not a sticker. I think that's a print. Uh, the doors are nice. I kind of prefer to keep the temple doors closed. It is kind of difficult to realign those sometimes. You kind of got to struggle with it. But overall, I like the doors. I like them shut. I think the temple looks better with the doors shut. Now, with this position, you can see even more what I was talking about in terms of the architecture. I love these golden lines here. They look awesome. They look just very serene, very peaceful. These lanterns, like I said, you can adjust if you so desire. You have stickers here. Are these stickers or are these prints? I can't remember. Uh, either way, you have detail there. Detail over on the other side. Master Wu can still sit in his little uh, little hut, little perch thing. The very top of the temple is also rather nice from the front. It just is more of the same architecture that we saw down below. Just extended a little bit. And this thing gets rather tall pretty quick. You can kind of see how this whole uh, upper section works. I do like the continued use of these golden uh, staffs here to represent some type of architecture. And of course, you have a sticker there as well with a nice little round window that you can easily put a figure in uh, looking out. Out of. That's pretty cool, actually, not going to lie. I think from the front, this temple is downright gorgeous. There's not a whole lot that I can complain about in terms of the architecture on this thing from the front. It just looks insane. And I wish I had more room to showcase the entire thing at once because it actually is a beautiful looking temple. I'm just kind of struggling with room or whatever. Uh, but overall, the temple itself looks really good from the front. From the back, it looks kind of iffy, but there is a reason for that. And let's go to the back right now. All right, guys. So starting off on the lower level of the 
back of the temple. It's the same temple, but it's just from the back view. You can see there is uh, there are some things to do down here. There are walkways that you can enter through, uh, various little bits that you can pull out, like this thing right here, which is revealed to be a neat little samurai uh, X station. You can kind of see how that works right down there. Pretty cool. It has some prints right here showcasing the Kai mech and how that was constructed. And you can put the little ha uh, hair slash helmet rack right back there if you'd like. There also is a spot back there to put a couple of other little things if you want. Uh, again, this is pretty much just up to you. It's up to the viewer, the purchaser, the consumer to display this however they may or may not want to. It just kind of depends on what you personally want to do with this thing. Uh, other things about this temple that I think are kind of cool from the back. Uh, you can see some more detail down inside of there. It is kind of difficult to access that, but you can see there is some detail right back in there. Again, not really sure how they expect me to access that, but that's whatever I suppose. Over on this side of the temple, you can just see another entryway going in over on that side, and it's the same deal over here. Now what's cool about uh, this set is again the play value and we talked earlier about that wall that appears to be kind of hollowed out. Well that is because you can bring in this thing and kind of attack it from the front like uh, like like so I think. You just kind of drill in and there you go. Do you guys see that? Hopefully you can kind of see what happened down there. This is not the best situation ever. It's not the best video that I've ever made. But hey, I just want to show you guys all the cool things about this set. I want to showcase how I feel about it. So yeah, you can do that. Not really meant for me, but it's still cool nonetheless. It's a cool addition. This is essentially the ground floor level of the temple. And not the basement, but the ground floor itself. Why is there so much dust on this thing already? That's insane. Uh, yeah, you have a couple of various spots here for weaponry. You can put some ninja right there. They could be selecting some weapons. You see some stickers in there. That's pretty nice. You have these weird white pots. Some of them do have contents in them, so those are worth accessing and opening up. Over here we have a little bit of a tea shop, or maybe like a little tea, uh, tea party place, I suppose. I really like this sticker right here. Kind of want to take that off so I can show you that sticker in full, because it is pretty cool. This is an entire uh, translation of the Ninjago alphabet as a sticker. You can see how uh, English letters uh, apply to these weird Ninjago symbols. It's cool. It's a nice addition. I'm glad that the set included something like that. It's easy for people now to learn how to right in the Ninjago language. That's awesome. I really enjoy how these red bars look here. They kind of hold up the entire construction of the place. Again, the back is very open, and while that's not really my preferred way to display the thing, it is worth it for the younger audience that this set is primarily designed for. And going up even further to the topmost levels, you can see that right here we have a little shrine for Master Wu. That's pretty funny. Uh, the ninja can just kind of pray to Wu, I guess. Or is that supposed to be the first Spinjitzu Master? I don't know. It looks more like Master Wu. On top here, you just have a little bit of uh, hangout spots. You have some newspapers, some, some teacups, a little bit of a trading card right here. That's cool. It's always cool to include these trading cards in Ninjago sets whenever possible. And you can see some weapons up here. Again, just another hangout spot, another place that you can put figures if you so desire. Uh, you can kind of grab figures and just kind of have them hanging out up there. It's not a bad look. It's not a bad thing for kids to play with. It's just kind of weird for display. I most prefer looking at this thing from the actual front. Uh, you can adjust some of the roof panels as well if you so desire. I don't know why you would want to do that, but that is worth mentioning that you can do. There's also these weird ball joints back here. Not sure what those are supposed to be for either. Overall, guys, the temple itself looks pretty amazing, and I wish I had more space and more of an ability to show you everything at once, but I think overall the temple is a pretty good looking temple. When you attach everything, when you reattach the little side build, it gets even more complete looking, and there's supposedly going to be another set coming out in March. March, uh, where you know it, it attaches to the other side and it's supposed to extend it out a little more. I don't think that set is necessary. I still think that this set is worth uh, worth it on its own. It stands on its own very well. You can definitely display it on its own. There's no need to put extras on there. Even taking away the extra right here, even taking that away entirely, the temple still looks pretty good on its own. Here we have the instruction booklet for this set, a pretty sizable manual for a pretty sizable set. And here we have the extra pieces, pretty good selection of spare parts here, a lot of small parts, a lot of various weapons that you can swap out for the ninja, the spent sticker sheet, and the brick separator that is also included in the set. So yeah guys, overall to wrap up my thoughts on the ninja dojo temple, this is not a bad set by any means. Is it ninja? 
Ninjago's best temple? No, I still think other temples are better, but this thing is pretty close to being one of Ninjago's better builds overall. The temple itself is beautiful looking. I love the colors, the shapes, the proportions. It's overall just an excellent temple, a very oriental looking temple, a very gorgeous and beautiful looking temple as well. This is one that I'm going to be displaying on my shelf for quite some time, and I do think for 100 bucks you get what you're paying for here, if not more. You get several minifigures, including several of the main ninja. You get a couple of really solid side builds, including Kai's mech. Overall, this is a very good set, and I would totally recommend it to any Ninjago fans out there. If you're looking for a new Ninjago temple to display, or if you're just a fan of this type of architecture, I would totally recommend checking out this set. And this is easily one of the better looking Ninjago temple sets in recent memory. So with that being said, you guys, thank you so much for checking out today's video. That'll pretty much wrap it up for my thoughts here today. Leave a comment down below talking about what you think about the set, and hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and check out the links down below in the description for my other forms of social media. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. Once again, guys, my name is Tanner Fishies, and with that, I bid you farewell.